Good morning and welcome to yet another far too early pitch black Essex morning. However, not only is it pitch black this time, but it's absolutely freezing. Autumn has definitely arrived in the UK. And so I think it's time to start talking about essential winter clothing. But for now, rather than you trying to look at me by the light of Jimmy's rear red, I think I'll wait for it to get a bit lighter and just try to stay warm. <sighs> Eight minutes to sunrise. Well, we've just fought our way up what appears to be a never ending hill, but here's the payoff because we finally hit sunrise. I actually said while it was dark earlier, I'm just gonna start the video off, just do the intro of it and then I'll do the rest later. And I heard him call out, what are we doing? And I said, oh, well, we're talking about winter cycling gear today. He was like, no, I mean, what are we doing out in this weather, in this dark, but that makes it all worth it. Right, let's talk winter cycling gear. So yes, winter has finally arrived in the UK, although technically it's still autumn, but it feels like winter because today it is three degrees Celsius or 27 degrees Fahrenheit. That is a chilly one, but a bit of cold weather should be no excuse for not continuing to get out on your bike. So here's my list of six essential bits of winter cycling kit. Now, I just happen to be an ambassador for Full Tuck, but I do love their caps anyway. And you may have noticed that I actually wear one all year round. And the good reason for that is because, well, as you might know, I'm bald. So my head gets pretty cold at any time of the year. But aside from that, it also keeps the sweat from running down into my eyes and soaks most of the sweat up on the top of my head. Lovely. But in the winter, it's perfect for keeping your head warm. And with a nice flexible peak, it's perfect for keeping that low hanging winter sun out of your eyes and whether it's an old wife's tale or not i don't know but apparently you lose most of your heat out of your head so keeping that covered keeping the heat in keeping yourself well insulated is a definite bonus oh and i will just match wearing a cap with having some ear coverings as well because the two worst types of pain in life are toothache and earache and it didn't hurt when your ears get cold you get that cold winter breeze blowing past them and it doesn't take long for that earache to start get your ears covered solve that problem jimmy what's your uh, favorite winter cycling item i do love a buff good thing about it is it can use it in multiple ways so i've got mine tucked down now at the moment just covering the neck because let's face it most jerseys do get a draft down the jersey i like these little thin ones this time of year sort of autumn a little bit on this ride when it was really cold i just had it pulled up here and that makes a huge difference and then when it gets even colder i've got three or four different levels of thickness so this is a nice thin one right up to one that's a real warm one so if you're going to get an item keep that neck warm stop drafts going down your jersey get a buff and in a range of different thickness as well. Yeah, one of the biggest things that can almost kill your ride, to be honest, is having a cold neck and chest. Not only is it uncomfortable and painful, but it also affects your breathing. And if you can't breathe properly on a bike, well, then you're in a bit of trouble. So yeah, as Jimmy says, a good buff in differing thicknesses to help throughout the different seasons. Okay, item number three, and I'm gonna regret doing this in this weather, but a merino wool base layer. And excuse me while I do it back up, because it is freezing. So going back to what we were saying about the buff, keeping that cold air off your chest is paramount. But not only that, it keeps the rest of your torso warm, and it just helps to keep that core temperature up. And so the warmer your core is, overall, the longer you're gonna be able to ride. And that is obviously a good thing. So the temperature's actually dropped now. Garmin's telling me. It was three degrees when we came out, it's now two. Two? Get your buff out. Get your buff out. So yeah, that's also what you need to be careful of on a ride, is you may go out and it's a particular temperature. So you might think, well, surely as I go out, as the day goes on, as the sun comes up, it's gonna get warmer, isn't it? Surely, not always the case, unfortunately. As today shows, temperature can go down as well as up. Even on a beautifully sunny day like today, with that giant golden orb shining in the sky. 
So Jimmy and I are currently a little bit concerned because we can't tell if whatever this is on the road is just the way the tarmac is, whether it's a bit of water or whether it is in fact ice. I think the ice probably would have burnt off by now in this sun, but still it's a bit of a concern. Okay, piece of kit number four. It's a decent pair of long finger gloves. Now I tend to wear gloves all year round and in summer wear the fingerless variety because my hands tend to sweat quite a bit in the summer. And I found out to my detriment going up Great Dunn Fell that that can have an absolutely disastrous effect on your cycling. I decided not to wear any gloves going up Great Dunn Fell thinking, well, I'm gonna be really hot. I don't want anything that's gonna make me any hotter, but my hands were really sweaty and I found that they were just slipping off the handlebars. Pro tip there, wear gloves going up Great Dunn Fell. But in the winter, there's nothing worse than having cold fingertips. So a good pair of long finger gloves and I actually wear a pair of cheap carry more glove liners under them as well, just to help trap that warmth a little better. Now these gloves that I've got are from a company called Galibier based in Ireland. And it's really good, affordable gear and really good quality. And these particular gloves that I've got, I think, are their Arden range, which are like an autumn winter glove. And then they do a mid winter glove, which is a bit thicker. And then they do a deep winter glove, which apparently keeps you warm up to minus 10. And I bought a pair of those last year after I did my minus five ride, where it was completely icy and absolutely freezing. It is a cold one. Lovely and sunny. It looks very pretty though. I've not had a chance to wear them yet because since that ride and since buying them, we haven't had any mega weather quite like that. But who knows, with the temperature now dropping so much, it may not be long before we start getting sub-zero temperatures again. So we've just hit 40 miles on this ride and Jimmy and I have to be home in 37 minutes because as ever, family commitments. But Jimmy is determined to make this ride a 50 miler. So 10 miles in 37 minutes. What do you reckon? So one unexpected consequence of pushing the speed on to try and get this 50 miles in by the time we need to be back home is that I am very warm now. So the headband slash ear covering has had to be pulled down. Ooh, it is warm. This ride has suddenly become a race. <laughs> We've now got four and a half miles to do in 20 minutes. Should be enough, right? Should be enough. Four and a half miles to do in 20 minutes. Do you reckon we'll make it? Yeah. 12 miles an hour. 12 miles an hour. We're doing 15 at the moment, 15 Ooh. average. Do 60. <laughs> do 60, he says. <laughs> yeah, all right. Oh, the race is on. Let's do it. So Jimmy's just correctly pointed out that just up ahead, we've got a railway line to cross. And if the level crossing is closed, then that's gonna end our hopes of getting back in time with 50 miles. So fingers crossed, we can get straight across the level crossing. Oh, train just pulling in. Ah, the crossing's closed, but the train has just pulled in. So are they just about to reopen it? All right, well, we've hopefully taken the quicker option, which is to walk up and over the gantry. There's a lot of steps here, Jimmy. Oh. What were you just saying? Never stand still. Why wait there on the move? Well, that seems to have been the right call because the cars are still stuck there. Never stop moving, says Jimmy. One point five miles to go, four minutes. We're gonna need a lap of the estate. So we've got two miles left to make it to fifty, and we're only one point five miles away from home. So Jimmy's just informed me we're gonna have to do a couple of laps of the housing estate. Well, that is fifty miles. <laughs> what a beauty. Well, we're we're four minutes late back, but you know we'll allow that. Love that. Ended up with an average speed of 15 miles an hour, which isn't bad considering how cold it's been today. Right, well, good riding with you, mate. I'll see you in the week. Well, absolutely wasn't expecting to do 50 miles today, but that's the beauty of cycling. Go out, see the countryside, get some miles in, and that's definitely helped with my weekly average because it's now gone back up to 50 miles needed per week, 
So that is my weekly requirement done, which is quite nice. Although I probably will try and get another ride in in the week to try and drop that deficit even further. But to finish this video off, I need to give you five and six of my essential winter cycling kit. And I needed to wait until I got back because the next ones are gonna be difficult to show you while I'm riding. So five and six, I'm actually lumping in together because they are largely the same thing, but they do two quite different jobs. So number five is merino wool socks. Essential for keeping your feet warm and especially keeping your toes warm. Because again, like having cold fingers, there's nothing worse than having cold toes. It can affect your pedal efficiency. It can just make you feel grumpy and it's just not a very nice thing to have. So keeping your toes warm with nice, thick merino wool socks is absolutely essential. And to go on top of them, over your shoes, or well, the clues in the name, over shoes, so as the name suggests, they go over your shoes and they are like a thick neoprene type material that, just like the socks, help to keep your feet warm, but more importantly, they keep your feet dry as well in the wet, windy conditions that you get in autumn and winter. Now, depending on the shoes you wear, and I'm a little bit silly because I tend to wear summer shoes all year round and they have vents underneath, which in the summer you need to get some cool air on your feet to cool them down not so much in the summer. And the problem I have with that is because the overshoes are open at the bottom to allow the cleats through, it also means that you can get water in the bottom of your shoe, which I've had quite a few times. So I do still end up sometimes with wet feet. So my bonus tip at the end of this video is get yourself some winter shoes that are completely closed off at the bottom. So when you put your overshoes over the top of them, you have a complete seal and you're getting no water inside your shoes. So there you go, that is my list of six essential bits of winter kit for cycling. But what else do you wear? Is there anything else that you guys insist on wearing when you go out and the weather's a bit colder? Let me know in the comments below. And as ever, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.